This episode we're going to be doing something a little different. I am in Arkansas at the uh, old Union Cemetery. I've been here before. You may have seen a couple of the stones here on an episode I did uh, that really showcased a lot of locations that I was only able to stop for a couple minutes, look around for a few minutes, take off, and so I didn't get to do like a full episode at this location. But I've always wanted to come back here because it's got one of my favorite stones that I've seen in my travels during my time doing this show and I wanted to do something a little special uh, and so that's why on this episode we're going to be cleaning that stone. This is going to be the first time I've had all the materials that I needed to clean a stone properly and I really wanted to clean this stone as well as we're going to be taking a rubbing of the stone uh, so I can show you guys how to do that properly as well. So let's just jump into it. Let's get this stone cleaned. So this is the stone of Lewis Barnes, who, according to the epitaph here, was uh, he died by the hand of an assassin. Uh, that struck me when I first came here, and I thought, man, that is, one, it's a beautiful stone, but two, you just don't see that every day. So we're going to clean the stone, and I'm going to walk you through kind of how I'm going to do it properly. Now, the first thing I needed to do was to make sure that this stone is secure because what you don't want to do is start scrubbing on a stone and knock it over and break it big no-no so it is a secure stone uh, I'm, I'm not worried about that but as you can see it has broken before there is a repair done it's split all the way across there so i'm just going to be very gentle i'm not going to put a lot of pressure on the top of the stone i'm just going to be very very gentle any stone i clean i'm going to be doing very very gently because i don't want to knock the stone over i also don't want to chip away parts of the stone you you really just want to let the chemicals do its job and uh you're not using muscle power to clean these stones. So now that I've, I've found that the stone is, is secure, I know where uh, there's a weak spot, I'm going to avoid that. I'm gonna make sure we're not putting any pressure on the stone. And honestly, it's not super, super dirty. Uh, so I, there's not gonna be a whole lot of hardcore scrubbing needing to be done. Next thing we're gonna do is take a look at our materials. All right, the first thing I have here is water. Now this is a hand pump uh, pressure washer. And when I say pressure, it's not hardcore pressure. It's literally just going to give a soft spray to clean off whatever's on the stone. You don't want to use like a full blown pressure washer because that will decimate any stone you're trying to clean. Uh, what I have in here is just straight up water. Uh, nothing special about it, filtered water. It's just normal water. The cleaning component I'm going to be using is called D2 
biological solution. This is the only type of cleaner recommended for stone cleaning. This is the, the same material uh, solution that they use at Arlington National Cemetery to clean the stones there. It's the only thing approved by the US government to do that work. And if it's good enough for our service members' uh, graves, it's good enough for the ones out here. Uh, the next thing I have, let me get my bag of tools out, is I have a very soft brush uh, because you don't want a hardcore like steel or hard plastic like stiff brush to brush away the stuff on the stone. Uh, you want to be as gentle as possible and this is super super soft. I do have a plastic spatula. If there's a lot of growth on a stone, you would lightly scrape away uh, the stuff with this. You, you don't manhandle it, you don't chip away at it. You just allow just the, the scraper to just knock off whatever will come off just loosely and freely. Again, the, big, the biggest part of cleaning these stones is it's not about muscle power, it's just about you know, taking off what, what really wants to come off. Uh, I also have another brush. It's a little bit coarser, a little bit harder, but this is for detail stuff. Uh, I have run this across uh, a lot of concrete to soften up the brushes a little bit. Uh, and this is only to get into like the finer uh, grooves of a stone. I don't think I'm really gonna need it for, for this cleaning. Uh, and then I also have a little paintbrush, a little soft paintbrush. Uh, to do the same thing that the other brushes do. Uh, it's just another option. And uh, I did wanna get one of these for a while actually, because a lot of times I'll go to a cemetery and they've just cut the grass and I'll see a lot of loose grass all over stones, especially flat stones uh, that are set in the ground kind of thing. And instead of just using my hand to wipe them off, just a little paintbrush to brush off the loose grass. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up, we're gonna get this stone cleaned. I'm gonna spray it down with a little bit of water. Uh, I'm going to uh, brush off any loose materials first, spray it down with a little bit of water, uh, and then I'm gonna hit it with the D2. Uh, I'm gonna let it soak in just a little bit, a couple minutes, and then we're going to use uh, this brush and just brush it in uh, and get all the loose stuff off the stone. And then we're gonna rinse it off with our water. So let's get to it.
right, so I've cleaned it. Uh, it took me about 20 minutes or so to, to give it the once over. Uh, the D2 will start to brighten the stone over time. So while it may not look like bright white now um, with the first cleaning, over time, over the next few weeks, that uh, D2 will eat away at all of the uh, biological substances that are embedded deep, deep within the surface of the stone, and it will start to brighten up quite a bit. Maybe someday I'll come down here and check it out again, but right now I'm just gonna let it dry, and then we will do a rubbing. That's the way being is made up.
hear music, what you really hear when you hear melody is the interval between one tone and another. The steps, as it were, on the scale. It's the interval. So in the same way, in the intervals between this year's leaves, last year's leaves, this generation of people and that generation, the interval is in some ways just as important, some ways more important, than what it's between. I've been out here for uh, two hours cleaning stones and it's hot outside. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the stones I've done now that they've dried off and see how they look.
right, so before I leave, we are going to do a rubbing on Lewis's stone. Uh, to do that, I brought some crayons, I brought some uh, pastels, and I, I have a big old thing of newsprint. Uh, I'm gonna tape it up to the stone and we're gonna take a rubbing. We're done. This has been a fun cleaning experience. It was my first time uh, coming out and cleaning stones. Did about four of them. Took me a couple hours. Uh, the first one, Lewis's, Lewis Barnes's stone is looking great. And that will whiten as uh, time passes. So over the next month or so, that stone will start to whiten as the, uh, the smaller particles of the, the growth that was on it start to die as well. But that's it. It's super hot outside. I've got to get home. I've got quite a drive ahead of me. Uh, but thank you to everyone who helped support this channel by donating monetarily so that I could get the cleaning supplies. Uh, it was definitely worth it. Uh, you have my undying gratitude. Uh, if you would like to support the, uh, the Cemetery Road and the cleaning kit and all that we do here, uh, you can do so. Just uh, the links to everything you need is down in the description of the video. Uh, I can't wait to do this again um, when it's a little cooler. But again, thank you to everyone who donated. Until next time, remember, be safe, be respectful, and I'll see you on the next one.